Praise the Lord, upper room, saints of God. It's great to be with you this Wednesday evening for Bible study. And um, it's just great to be here today and uh, hope you feel the presence of the Lord right where you're at, your living room or wherever you view these uh, online messages. God bless you today. Whenever our pastor preaches, I get so inspired by his anointing. And when I feel that anointing on him, the Lord just seems to give me new thoughts out of what he's preaching. So this past Sunday, as our pastor was preaching on mealtime miracles, and we're sitting around, we were at a campground uh, about 20 miles east there out by Otai Lakes, and we're sitting at the campground and, and enjoying the message pastor's preaching. We got video, or we got uh, online uh, Wi-Fi out there. And I had to jump up. I think my wife wondered, what's going on? I jumped up, got me a pen, got me a piece of paper, because these uh, thoughts started coming to my mind that I want to share with you tonight. And because uh, of the anointing of the Lord that we felt in that message. So let's go to our text. The text that I want to preach from today is John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Open your Bibles there if you can. And uh, the setting here is Jesus has just fed the 5,000. And now he is talking with, I guess, the Jewish leaders, Pharisees, Sadducees, the scribes, as they've come to talk to Jesus I, uh, about, about food, about this miraculous meal that's just happened. So we pick up the narrative in John chapter 6, verse 31. And these are the Jewish leaders talking to Jesus. Verse 31, our fathers did eat manna in the desert as it is written. Now I believe he's talking about Moses here because of the next verse, the Lord kind of corrects them. He says, as it is written, he, I think they're talking about Moses, gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. I like that. I am the bread of life. This is one of the seven I am statements of Jesus in the book of John. He said, I am the light of the world. I am the door to the sheepfold. I am the resurrection and life. I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth, and life. I am the true vine. And here in John 6, he said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he, shall, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. I want to bring this thought from the inspiration that Pastor Rivera uh, brought to us Sunday morning and inspired this thought in my mind, are you hungry? Are you hungry? As Pastor was preaching about the miraculous meal that God provided his people in the wilderness. And here in uh, our text, uh, Jesus is reminding the people in John chapter 6, it was not Moses that provided that, but our, the God of heaven provided that manna in the wilderness. You know the story. They had come out of Egypt on that Passover night, and they had crossed the Red Sea. Now, as far as we know, the last meal that they partook of was the Passover meal. Talk about eating on the run. They had to eat the meal and then immediately get on the run and leave Egypt. And most likely, as most of us would have done, they said, let's pack something for, for the trip. And they probably packed some takeout, if you will. But by this time, they've traveled a few days and all the takeout, all the leftovers, uh, the, 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 the extra bread, the extra gravy, the extra uh, lamb chops, if you will, they were all gone. And they were hungry. And they cried out to Moses for food. But we know that only God can provide food in the desert place. In Exodus chapter 6, 16, verse 7, Moses says, In the morning ye shall see the glory of the Lord. And verse 14, the next morning, chapter 16 of Exodus, verse 14, When the dew that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing, 
as small as an hour frost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord giveth you to eat. The word manna literally means, What is it? What is it? That was their response to this bread from heaven, this miraculous meal, this bread of life that would sustain them for the next 40 years. They said, What is it? And as Pastor Rivera was preaching this past Sunday morning about the miraculous meal, my mind fast forwarded to another time when another miraculous meal was poured out from heaven and the people asked the same question, what is it? Of course, I'm talking about the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. 120 believers come out of the upper room speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance and the response of the people was, what is it? Chapter 2 of Acts, verse 12, it said, They were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? In other words, what is this? We've never seen this. We've never heard this. We've never felt this. What is this? And I submit to you tonight, according to the word of the Lord, that just as the manna in the wilderness was the natural bread of life, this baptism of the Holy Ghost we enjoy today is our spiritual bread of life. Are you hungry? In our text, John 6, the leaders speaking to Jesus that our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And then Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread, but my Father giveth you the true bread. My Father has a miracle meal for you. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. I am the bread of life. Our manna is the Lord Jesus Christ and the baptism of His Spirit in our lives. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. The Spirit of Jesus Christ is our bread of life and our living water for us to feast upon in our hunger and our thirst for Him. Are you hungry tonight for the bread of life? Are you thirsty for living water? Jesus reminded the Jews it was not Moses who prepared the manna, but their God. He was their deliverer. He was their redeemer. He was their shepherd. But he was also, if you will, their divine chef who had prepared this heavenly meal, this miraculous meal that he said, it's ready, come and get it. I'm laying it on the ground. Likewise, God has been preparing this miraculous meal we call the Holy Ghost from before the foundations of the world. First Peter, we read in chapter 1, he's speaking here of this Holy Ghost salvation. Verse 9 in chapter 1 of First Peter, he says, Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. They knew something was coming. They knew God was cooking up something in the heaven kitchen, if you will. They didn't know the when or the where or the exactly what, but they could tell something is coming to mankind that is wonderful. And verse 20, it said, Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times. Before the foundation of the world, God already had a recipe, if you will, a miraculous meal in mind for His people one day to receive. And all those years, God was preparing. And finally it came. And when Jesus Christ hung on the cross and cried out finally and said, It is finished. It's like He was really saying... The meal of salvation is ready. It has been prepared. It is done. It is ready to be served. Now is the time to come and feast upon the feast of salvation. The manna in the wilderness only lasted for 40 years. 
But thank God the Holy Ghost has been poured out for over 2,000 years and we are still feasting on that manna from heaven. In the book of Exodus, it describes the manna as a very small thing. It said it was as small as the, 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 the hour frost on the ground. It's a tiny little thing. But that little thing, that small thing fed over uh, millions of people, multitudes of people every day for 40 years. God, little thing, can do great things. And this Holy Ghost outpouring in Acts chapter 2, it may have started out as a small thing, but it wasn't long. It became a very large, world-filling thing. 120 came out of the upper room, and that day 3,000 were baptized. Not long later, 5,000 were filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized. And then the Bible says multitudes believed. And finally, later on in the book of Acts, we say they turned the world upside down. It may have begun small, but it became a world-changing experience. And today, we are still receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. And the fact fact is, more are receiving this miraculous meal, the bread of life, uh, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, than ever before in the history of the church. As the songwriter, I believe Brother Spell sings, the fire is still falling, the wind is still blowing, and the river is still flowing. Are you hungry for the bread of life? On the Feast of Pentecost, from the book of Leviticus, they would bake freshly uh, loaves of the, of the harvest that they had just harvested out of the field, the wheat and the barley. And they would make fresh loaves of bread and they would go out and wave these loaves of bread before the Lord in thanksgiving for His abundant harvest. And in Acts chapter 2 on that Pentecost, all of Jerusalem was filled with this aroma of fresh bread. It was Pentecost. And they were celebrating and waving the bread all around the city and every home and every residence. It must have filled the atmosphere. But there was another, if you will, aroma of a bread coming out of the upper room that they had not experienced before. It was the aroma of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, praise God. And I will say this to you today. When I first walked into this little Pentecostal church 49 years ago, there was a spiritual aroma in the air. I had never felt it. I had never sensed it before. But I said, you know what? I am hungry. And there's something here. I want whatever these people have. It was the aroma of fresh baked bread from heaven. It was God's miraculous meal just waiting for a young hungry soul to receive. That aroma is still here. I said it's still here. And we're still experiencing this wonderful, miraculous meal called the Holy Ghost in 2020. In John 4, Jesus met a woman who was thirsting for more. She had tried everything the world could offer her, but she was still thirsty. You know the story. The woman had been married five times and now living with someone. No doubt in all those experiences, she would tried the alcohol and she would tried the, the pot of the day, if you will. And she'd been to all the clubs and there all the nightlife. But she said, you know what? I'm still thirsty for something. In John chapter 4, we read the story. Jesus said unto her, Whosoever drinks of this water shall thirst again. Talking about the waters of this life. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst again. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. And the woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water. Are you as thirsty as the woman at the well for the living water? In John 7, Jesus was at the Feast of Tabernacles. Yes, the feast. It was a magnificent, large, glorious feast. And they had eaten and they had drunk all week long of the natural food and the natural drink. But in the end, Jesus steps up and cries out. We read John 7, verse 37, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst... Let him come and they must have thought, Jesus, 
What are you talking about? We've been drinking and eating all week long. And you say, if anybody's thirsty, is anybody hungry? But then in verse 38, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Verse 39, this spake he of the spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. Jesus cried out then, and he still cries out tonight. Are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? Are you tired of the things the world offers you? Are you tired of feeling empty when you uh, go away from that experience that the world has? Or are you even tired of the, the lifeless rituals that the Jews were going through? The meaningless ceremonies that had lost their meaning years ago. Are you going to a church where you just go and you sit and nothing really happens? Jesus says, come. I have a water of life for you. I close tonight with this thought. In the natural, I don't know about you, but my wife and I are getting a little tired of takeout dinners. Going and ordering. We're going on the app and ordering online and then going and picking it up. And going out somewhere and eating it in our car. We're tired of being locked down and isolated and separated from our loved ones. We are ready for a full-blown sit-down meal. We're ready for the buffet, Brother Roger. We're ready for the five-course dinner, for the salad, the soup, and the entree. We're ready for it all, the dessert that follows. That's the natural. But more than that, spiritually, I think we all are ready for a good old-fashioned, Holy Ghost-filled, Pentecostal service. Hallelujah. I thank God for the online messages that our ministry team has been putting out on a daily basis and the Bible studies and our pastor's weekly Sunday message. Thank God for all these things. Amen. But it's time to come together. It's time to have a full course meal, if you will, of praise and worship together, united in one mind and one accord as they were in the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost. And what better time to celebrate than this Sunday? Yes, I said this Sunday. This Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. This Sunday is a celebration of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost and the birth of the church. And our pastor, our leader, our shepherd has decided since the guidelines have opened up and, and the governor has opened up and the president said to open up the churches that we are going to open up here at Upper Room this Sunday morning, praise God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. This Pentecost Sunday, the church doors will be open. We invite you to come. Let's come hungry. Let's come thirsty for the Spirit of the living God. And let me say this. To all of you that may be wondering, will it be safe? Will we be okay? We're going to take every precaution to have a full cleaning and a sanitizing of the facilities, of course. And the pastor will have people in place to be sure that everyone enters is safe and you'll be kept safe. Especially we say that to our senior citizen uh, saints of God. He will be contacting you and giving instructions uh, on this reopening and it will be done safely and in order according to the guidelines put out by our state government. But again, let's come hungry and thirsty for the spirit of the living God. As I said earlier, after 40 years, the manner ceased for Israel. They knew it's only going to last for a short time. And for 40 years, it continued for them but thank God our miracle meal called the Holy Ghost has never stopped falling from heaven. Acts chapter 2, we read about our promise of our bread of life. Verse 37, now when they heard this, when they had heard Peter explain what this was, and they said, what is it? And he explained what it was. They were pricked in their heart and they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? What are they saying? They're saying, you know what? We want what you've got. We're hungry. This 
feast of Pentecost, it just doesn't do it like what you've got. And so they said, what shall we do? We're hungry. We are thirsty. Verse 38, Peter answers them and says, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, to your children, to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. God is still calling. Come and dine, the old song says. The master calleth, come and dine. Are you hungry tonight? If you are, God has a miracle meal prepared for you. God's final message in the Bible, found in Revelation twenty two seventeen 17, to mankind, it said, The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst, Come. And whosoever will, let him come and take of the water of life freely. You that have uh, been around the church a while, you've heard me tell you and preach to you many times, what's God's favorite word in the Bible? It's come. Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. And God's final message to the world that we live in is come, drink the water of life, Take the bread of life. Take the living water. If you're hungry, if you're thirsty, let him come to God. Now out in the old country days, they would just call out from the dinner table and they'd say, dinner is ready. Come and get it. And all the hungry people would come running to the dinner table. Tonight, Jesus is calling out, your miraculous meal is ready. Come and get it. Come and dine. Come and be fed. If you're hungry for the bread of life and you're thirsty for living water, come this Sunday, Pentecost Sunday. Come together with the saints of God and come expecting, come praying, come reaching, come worshiping God. Come with a hungry heart. God bless you tonight. We'll see you this Sunday. As I said, you'll be contacted from the ministry team about the plan that we're going to use of reopening the sanctuary. God bless you. It is a great day to serve the Lord. In Jesus' name.